Here are some interesting facts about our artist, Henri Rousseau. You know, believe it or not, Henri Rousseau painted amazing jungle scenes filled with lions, tigers, lots of lush plants, but he never actually set foot in a real jungle. He used his imagination and books to create these fantastical worlds. Before becoming a famous artist, Henri Rousseau worked as a toll collector, which is basically like a ticket booth guy. At first, some people laughed at Rousseau's paintings because they looked different from other artwork. But later, other artists loved his unique style and became well known. Rousseau never went to art school. He learned to paint all by himself, which is pretty impressive. Rousseau's paintings are full of bright colors and simple shapes, making them look almost like a happy dream. Let's get started creating our own interesting jungle scene, kind of like our artist Henri Rousseau. There is a packet of different ideas that you can use for different animals for this project. When you thumb through these pictures, choose the one that you would like to do best. One of the things that might be helpful is when you're drawing out your animal, I went ahead and I took my pencil and I drew a straight line down the middle, right in half, and then a straight line in the middle all the way across. This might be helpful so that you can break this image down into four equal sections. So you can kind of see where to put the eye in the placement onto your paper and this eye onto the placement of your paper, right? So you can see how much space is between the two eyes. I can see that my nose is going to be below the fold line on the middle of my paper and it kind of gives me how much space. It'll also tell me that it's right on the line when I've done my uh, paper and it just kind of helps me break it up instead of one big picture, look at just one fourth of the picture. Then move on to the other fourth of the picture, right? And just focus in on instead of one big area, break it down into four smaller areas onto your paper, right? So I hope that uh, you can find an animal that you are interested in doing. When you are drawing out your animal, please go ahead and sketch that in pencil. Um, like I mentioned, you're welcome to fold your paper into four sections so that when you are drawing the image, it might be helpful to know where to put the placement of the eyes above the fold line, in between the fold line. It'll help me in the placement of my nose on the fold line. And then once you've sketched it out in pencil, also please add on some details of some uh, items you would see into the jungle. Once you've finished with your pencil work, let's go ahead and grab a Sharpie to go over all of our pencil lines to outline. This makes it so that anything that we want everybody to see, we can all see it better. There, now that it's outlined in Sharpie, let's get out our watercolor crayons. When you get out watercolor crayons, you can see they're a lot like regular crayons. Sometimes I use just the side of my watercolor crayon and I always start out with the lightest color first. Once I've got the lightest color on, I'm building up some of my darker values with some of those darker crayons. As you can see right now, I went from a yellow to a gold to a reddish brown and then to a brown. I'm also using this technique into the background. You can see I pulled out multiple colors of green, couple different colors of blue and purple, couple different colors of greens, and then I'm using those colors to fill up the whole page so that by the time that I'm done, there's little to no white. Now, for the fun part, we're gonna make those crayons turn into a paint. Let's take our project a container of water and a paintbrush and start adding some water. You'll notice that when I start painting the whole thing, I am not taking my paintbrush and just covering the whole entire thing because when I take my paintbrush into the paint, my paintbrush is holding some of that color. 
So when I go to a different section of my project, I wanna make sure that my brush is washed out and that it's clean before I go into, for example, the leaves, before I go into the, for example, the lion. I wanna make sure that I have a clean paintbrush because right now my brush is full of the color that it's picking up from the paper. That's why I'm taking my time as I start to begin painting. Now this is done in real time. Like this is like me not fast forwarding it, but here in a moment, I will pick it up, pick up the pace so that you can see what it looks like in a fast amount of time. Again, I don't go this fast in normal pace. I just wanna be able to show you what it looks like as I continue adding water onto my, um, my project. I also took a towel and dabbed off some of the extra water that was on my project. Just kind of gives me a little bit more control and it makes the paper dry a little faster. Mm, I love the way that these colors mix. Now let's take a moment, set it on the drying rack and let it dry. While that's drying, I grab some scrap pieces of construction paper and just like with my watercolor crayons, I'm using a mixture of oil pastels to draw and use multiple colors while I start making my flowers. You'll notice that I started with colors and the last color I use is black to outline and make sure that that color does not smear. All the other colors can mix, but I don't want my black to mix. I really had fun creating and designing not just my image of my animal, but also creating some really cool foliage or leaves or flowers into my project. Once you're done, let's go ahead and uh, set this aside. We'll start cutting these out and gluing them in place. <music> 